here's as far as I got with skateboarding. I bought a Volterra Back to the Future skateboard from uh, Toys R Us, yeah. learned how to flip it, yeah. um, made a lot of fantasies that involved swords and me and a skateboard yeah. um, and me kicking ass. And uh, yeah, that was about the end of it for me. <laughs> yeah, it was super thick, super lame. Like, yeah. I, I don't, maybe I would have had a chance if I didn't buy that board, but I, I, I could never deal with the, pr the, the pressure, the, the vibe. It was just too much for me to handle and yeah. shit, you know? Like, uh, you know, like early 90s uh, skate culture was, uh, it was a vibey bunch totally. and shit. And totally. I wasn't in the mood for it. <laughs> so. That's the weird thing about skate me skateboarders or the skate videos is like the, the musicians like you don't really get to you don't get to pick that it's kind of like the the skater yeah. and shit I mean like every time I'm asked to use a song um, of ours for a skate thing it's always the same song for like the last twenty years really? and shit, yeah it's shit luck like almost without fail <laughs> except for Tony's used other things you yeah know? like but like mostly it's just like they saw shit luck used on the skate video or something like that yeah. you know. And I like that it's the skater usually gets to pick the yeah. music, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the right thing. Like, yeah. You know, recently it was like, oh, within the last year, uh, some kid got a hold of me. And I don't fucking pay attention to names. I'm just not good like that. It's, right. a, it's a habit I should get into and I probably won't. Right. But, you know, this, you know, this kid called me. He was friends with a friend of mine, this guy, Matt Gee. A friend had got like his first, you know, Skate, yeah, the portion. Uh, I don't remember who the fuck it was with because I, I also don't pay attention to that. I don't pay attention to much anything. I just okay. drift through pay my fucking weird life. Um, but anyways, uh, and then like about a month later, I get a call from someone asking to use the same song. And I thought it was the same dude, and it took me a minute to put together. You know, it's like two separate. I was like, oh, hey, I should let you know. Like someone else is already using that. Like, in something that's coming out. Maybe it's you. I don't know. Um, and things. And they're like, ah, oh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Shit luck it is. People love shit luck to skate to. And I don't know why. Because it's kind of metal, um, which is <laughs> what we usually do. But there, you know, I, we, had a, we would have had a decent career if we'd gone metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, let's see. Let me do a little math here. Probably 1990. No, I was still in high school. I was 15 when we started the band. Uh -huh. um, I was born in 75. 15 years later would be 1990, wow. 91, something like that. Yeah. Well, I was I was playing music with some uh, fairly quiet dudes. I, I don't think Jeremiah or Eric um, would have been the sing singer, if, you know, like if I were on mute. I don't think they would have, you know, like gone that route. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't I don't know actually. I'm not really sure. I like, uh, you know, like. I talk too much and shit, so I might as well sing too much. I, I, I was the singer of the band before I had anything to fucking say. A work in progress, just a fucking walking identity crisis, and yet, I, you know, right. there it was. And I mean, I tried pretty hard to sound like Frank Black and David Byrne at right. different points, you know, like when I was a teenager and stuff. <clears throat> but that collided with me being into, like, that, this uh, really, like, minimalist type of music K Records was putting out, just like, any idiot can do it. That was kind of the premise. Like, you know, any, hey, doesn't matter. It's, it's music, you know? I'm like, well, we all do it and shit, which is not true. Um, don't, you know, like, anyone, anyone can, but not everyone should, you know? Like, and they proved that fucking point for us. But uh, it was good. So I was, you know, like, listening to, you know, I was listening to James Brown, listen, listening to, um, a sh you know, shit ton of the Pixies or, you know, I, I had a pretty heavy moment with all things Discord, you know, uh, like yeah. Lungfish and Asian Ulysses, Circuits Lupus and Fugazi were my yeah. jams. Yeah. That's a uh, that's pretty difficult answering the how to how do you write yeah. a song thing because yeah. um, well it, it's different every time. It also just involves you know like a, an aquarium full of all your shit, right. like everything that's you is in this thing and you're not even necessarily reaching into gravity, you're more just like looking with bad vision at something and right. pulling out. Musically, um, you start playing something and if it feels like something you've heard, you stop playing it or you okay. change it. Okay. Um, for, for me, I just try and, you know, like, try and find some way to um, make familiar shit very unfamiliar and then make it, make it feel close to you. 
but the how you get there and shit, is, is, or how you get there, the process of getting to a song is completely hallucinatory. I have no idea what the what makes it happen. At what point it's there and stuff. Was it you know like more often than not, you just gotta quit quit trying to get there and whatever's there. It's like I hope that maybe the next thing that you do answers that question and things. You know. Three years prior to this, uh, where I'm at now, yeah. and things, I was in the studio uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, yeah. and shit. I'd go, I'd sleep once every three to four days yeah. for a few hours, and yeah. um, then go back in and uh, do all fucking weird drug addictions, all sorts of stuff to stay up and right. just spend a week awake and shit and we know how that's done right. and then be like oh i'd take a, like a six hour sleep and go back to the studio and be like what the f you guys let me do this like why didn't someone put me into bed this isn't this is awful <laughs> and then i'd start the same thing and then i just do the same thing I just couldn't stop so anyways for three years we hardly toured at all canceled entire european tours because i was like why the why the fuck are we doing this you, like we took a vote oh you know the whole band was there i was like who wants to go do this tour? We're, we're, we're not going to make any money. That's a given. Um, but we could finish the record in these six weeks, which was a lie I told myself repeatedly. Right. Uh, the six-week lie. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's only going to take six weeks to get it done. Why well, go to Europe? We'll get, get done with the record instead. And then we'll get, that costs a shit ton of money. It turns out canceling tours costs more than they pay. Um, I didn't realize that. Uh, I learned something. I'm like 20-some years into this, and I think I have about $3,500 in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked. All right. <laughs> it, it's obviously going to be a grind. If you've got like, let's just keep it a simple number. One month of touring and stuff. It, it, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not likely you're going to enjoy right. doing that every day for a month. Right. You know, like just some days you're going to be like, holy shit. I just did anything but this. But that's not how it works. You can't, you know, like, you can't sell tickets to people on the chance you might play or whatever, you know, right. and, or the chance you might be in the fucking mood to do it. Right. Oh, you'll get in the mood. Thanks, right. booze. So I think you become a professional musician when you realize you've run out of options. Like, you're still doing it, and somehow, you know, the rent's been paid most of the time. Right. And, you know, like, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, I don't have a backup plan, and this is working. I should probably get better at this. I just keep, you know, it's like, don't fuck this up. Hey, maybe I should show up sober. Um, one out of three times at least, just, you know. Um, so the boss, which is apparently the public, uh, doesn't fire you. Um, or your liver. Your liver might fire you. It tried. But I don't know, like, uh, I, I, I think some people do make a, you know, like make a decision to, you know, like, this is what they're doing. They fucking, you know, they call up old men with, like, good histories of, like, pitching bullshit. And they're just like, be our old man. I'm like, okay, I'm 55%. Ah. And, you know, and then you, know, you become a slave to, uh, I think they'd say your art, but I don't really believe in art, so right. whatever the fuck it is. Right. Um, and, per, you know, for us as a unit, it just kind of happened accidentally. We really? just kept doing the thing we... Enjoyed doing, and it kept working. Yeah. And then you find yourself. I think also part of being a professional at any, anything is when you find yourself doing it when you don't feel like doing it. Right. It's like, oh, I'd actually really rather not be doing this, but this is my job. Right. Oh shit, right. there it is. It's my fucking job. Right. Oh, no. Why? Why do I? I? I have no idea why I do anything and <laughs> stuff. I don't know why I say the things I say or do the things I do. I have absolutely no idea. But. Fuck it, you know, like, it, it, it hasn't not worked. Right. It's not necessarily working, but it's not not working and right. shit. Like, uh, for me, I just, I know what I want. Like, I know, I know what I'm aiming for. I don't, I don't know what it looks like. I don't, I don't know how to get there. But I know I'll know when I get there. Just, yeah, just keep, uh, you know, feeling around in the dark and trying the right stuff, I, I guess. I mean, no, I... I'm, let me, let me re-hear myself say that and see if I believe anything I just said. 